Hello, 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 this is Tony Mike I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual, and I'm Judge Manning's courtroom. I, I haven't seen it yet. I just thought I'd have a cup of coffee and watch it with you. Let's get started, shall we? Power. I understand yes. what you said. I Can I understand. take credit? Not right now. Let us take care of this, okay? Well, I will ask, is there anything that you want to say before sentence is passed, Mr. Glazier? We don't, Your Honor. We, we're all set. We don't need anything else to say, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I? No, you may not. Antoine Sutton, he's in the Department of Correction. He was sent off uh, just March 30th. Where is this one? That's one of the ones you took off, you put out on bond. Oh, yeah. Oh, because I said it. Yeah, so he's in there. So what is it you need to... Um, yeah, because it looked like he was out. He's he's he was transferred to the Department of Correction on the 30th of March. I just wanted to let the court know he there's no bond hearing. He's not in Fulton County Jail anymore. Did they even give a bond on that? Because I didn't see one, but then I saw a note for like a thousand dollars. I don't know what that was. No, I don't think he had a bond. Well, if you talk to do you know how long he's gonna be at the Department of Corrections by any chance? Uh, no, he was revoked on probation violation. Oh, okay. Well, sometime between then and now, if you need to have a a bond hearing, you know, before he gets sent back or something, see, and you want to waive his presence, just let me know. Okay. Thank you, Ron. All right. Thank you. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. All yes. right. So we could go ahead and handle the bond modifications of these folks are on there. Uh, let's see. Brian. So one says Brian West, and then is Brian West on here yet? And your honor, um, as far as Mr. West goes, I I think that his phone is cut off or broken. Um, I would ask if we could continue this because he has, I have been in touch with him. Um, it is unusual that I'm not able to reach him, but I was not able to reach him to send him the Zoom link. So, um, oh, okay. Is this, are you trying to get his ankle monitor removed? Yes, your honor. All right. Where's the, so how long has he had it on? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> He, he's he's been out for a minute your honor well this is a 21 case so is he headed on for let me look. when he was in custody for quite some time before he was released but he was released on oh, may of 2022 oh so it's coming up on a year yes may 11th he his bond was signed may 11th 2022 oh okay so miss miss turner what do you what do you think? Because, I mean, I think I told you before that, you know, I talked with McBurney and he agreed that like one year on the ankle monitor was is plenty if I hadn't been indicted. Um, No objection from the state, Your Honor. Okay. I mean, we can wait on it, Miss Bassett. You go ahead and send me the order. I, I will go ahead and send you the order, Your Honor. You want me to draft it? Yeah, if you don't mind, that'd be cool. I do not mind. Thank <laughs> right, you. Well, what about Lester White? Mr. White should be here. Um, I think I did see him on the Zoom. Um, he also would like to have his ankle monitor removed. He has been out uh, um, since I want to say August of 2022 after spending 366 days in custody. I would note uh, he has had some issues where the ankle monitor has caused some swelling in his leg. He sent me some photos. I will spare everybody else those photos, um, but there is noticeable and significant swelling you, uh, that has been occurring in his leg because of the ankle monitor. I would also note that he's reporting that his the charging plug has started to short out and making it very difficult for him. Mr. Simpson, Mr. Simpson, D. Simpson, D. Simpson, D. Simpson, goodbye. Don't let him back in. He's driving. Sorry. <laughs> See you, That's Simpson. Fine, Your Honor. Um, so, but, uh, Mr. White has been having trouble charging his ankle monitor because the charging plug has started to deteriorate, just normal wear and tear, not anything that he's doing. Um, I would know oh. he has been working uh, for hospitality staffing. Uh, he's, they have him stationed at the Marriott Marquis downtown. 
Um, he did uh, just get employee of the month um, for good attendance and employee of the month for a permanent position with Marriott. <laughs> Um, so I would ask the court, I, I don't think that he's any kind of flight risk. He's had no issues. Okay, in all seriousness, that is good. He's been great about keeping in touch with me. I, I think he's proven himself and I would ask that that ankle monitor be removed. Let's say you missed the, so he's got two cases. He's got the rubber buffer wash position marijuana, and then he's got the escape. Robbery by force, but also 66 days. This is a 2021 case and it is still unindicted. Yeah. Has um has he tried to get a replacement for the ankle monitor or for the cord? I'm sorry. For the cord? Yes. So like, the, the the replacement cords are as as I understand it, they're kind of pricey. Yeah, they have to pay for them. And I think that would present a financial hardship for him. Okay. No, no offenses, Judge. Uh, before this case, he didn't have anything since 2019. So nothing in two years and nothing two years before that. <laughs> what do you think, Ms. Turner? <laughs> no objection from the state. Okay. We're starting early today. We're starting early. Okay. Thank you, Mr. White. <laughs> She'll get me an order. All right, now we got Terry Cummings. Is he on here? Oh, good uh, lord. He is oh, on here, lord. Your Honor. And uh, this is Miss Hansen's case that so I am covering for her. Uh, okay. The notes that she sent me say that he was arrested, originally arrested on these charges on uh, January 23rd, 2022. He was released May 18th of 2022 on a $30,000 bond. Um, D did I hear that right? Is, is the defendant's name Harry Cummings? <laughs> He, Miss Hanson says that she has no. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, Mr. Cummings. No, sir, you're driving, aren't you? <laughs> Are you driving? Oh, it's Terry. It's Bye. Terry. That's better. Bye. Okay. No driving. <laughs> nope, no driving. <laughs> Come on now, give me a break. Let's move on. Let's move on to Dante Simpson. All right, two drivers. He's got your client here, Mr. Simpson. He was kicked out for driving, Your Honor. Driving, um, <laughs> but he was here, so honorable. What do you, what do you honor. want? All right, what do you want to do? But for Mr. Simpson, he um, is under pre-trial services under um, pre-indictment number twenty-one CP two zero four six four five. There's also an existing indictment number twenty-two SC one eight two five five five. That indictment contains the allegations that are in the CP number. Under 22 SC 182555 in front of Judge DeFore, he's currently completing the adult diversion program, Your Honor, which requires him to check into the DA's office to make sure he's in compliance with the agreed upon um, proposition that he was given by the DA's office. He is under um, pre-trial services under the 21 CP case. Um, he's been there for over four months, Your Honor, without an indictment. So we're simply asking the court to remove the pre-trial services um, condition for the CP case. And then from the state, we're asking for the state to no process that case because um, the allegations in that case are contained therein under the indictment. Ms. Turner may need a chance, may have to look at the indictment. And that's fine. And I can, yeah. she's in our courtroom, so I can send it to her. Okay. Yes. So if y'all work it out and you just miss, just let me know and I'll sign the order. Is that good? Right. Okay. But I, I guess for, for the moment, for the pretrial, I think that's something a lot more simple that we can go ahead and get an order signed tonight for. Well, and it usually is. They only keep them on, what do you say, Bosick, 90 days? How, how long do you keep them on the pretrial? It's supposed to be four months per standing order. But he's uh, in the in the house. I'm not sure if they are officially back on track with that yet. Oh, okay. COVID, but there's a note saying that the case was closed to judicial hold. Going over there at some point. Judicial hold on this case? No, there's not a bench or anything that I'm seeing in Odyssey. I just don't see the actual um, standing closure, the closure order that typically you see in cases after four months. That was, that note was put in here. Case closed by judicial hole in February. Or the canceled case meeting hearing was today. 1D. Did he have something in 1D today at 10 o'clock? 
one D. One D would have been where um just Glamble is, isn't it? And now we're Glamble's doing the hearings. Were you in one D, Miss Gowney? No. <laughs> I think the entire defense bar is banned from one D, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, I just want the him to be removed from pretrial. Is Siako said, uh, saying Judge Emerson in one D is what she said in the chat. It was a trial. It was not this case. The one D didn't have YSL in it. They were in there earlier. Oh, uh, that's one C. Oh, I thought they were one C and D. Bostic, it looks like he's off of it anyway. They closed it out. That was one of the last notes. Um, but just do something. Just what cases? Ooh, we get to see Bostic today. This one on the calendar, four, six, four, five, step by taking. You know what? Um, uh -huh. that's, that's where she got confused. I, Cause I see what Ms. Gowdy is saying because the, uh, the CP case looks like the indicted case. They combined them. And the uh, SC case is in judicial hold. So it actually should be closed judge. Okay. This case and it's judicial actually, hold because he's doing adult diversion. So the CP case should be closed because it's part of the indictment. So it. So we'll do the so, thing to remove it from pretrial services and then let Ms. Turner just verify that. I mean, not that we don't believe you, boss, but let her do it. And then if there's a closer, whatever you guys can let me know. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Come on back, Ms. Bassett. All right. So what's. Uh, What's your client wanting, Mr. Cummings? This is, Ms. This, this is Ms. Hansen's client. Is he uh, is he pulled over? Oh, uh, he hadn't back yet. But just okay. tell him he was mad because I kicked him out. I was I was just about to text Miss Hansen, so uh, she will be uh, <laughs> probably significantly less stressed out when I don't send her that text message. Um, so uh, it's my understanding that uh, Mr. Cummings and the complaining witness share a child together, but they have. Um, worked out a third party exchange uh, and that appears to be working working well uh, as far as I know as far as Ms. Hansen knows um, there have been no issues uh, with Mr. Cummings and the complaining witness I don't uh, have any reason to believe that any there's been any contact between the two of them he does have a good address he works full time uh, and he has been on that that ankle monitor for almost a year and there have been no issues all right so what do you want to do take the ankle monitor off uh, I I would very much like that, Your Honor. I'm sure Mr. Cummings would as well. Iris, aren't you partying in Vegas right now? Ms. Turner, let me see what he bonded out. State would not object to that, Your Honor. Okay, yeah, it looks like he bonded out May 15th. Okay. All right. Okay, that's all those, right? How are we doing, Ms. Gaston, on the court reporter? We're coming. We're coming. I'm negotiating with one. <laughs> uh, one just had eye surgery, so their, eye, their pupils are not uh, undilated. We're coming, but I what did what happened with Fiac, uh Miss Fiaco? Is she still on trial and that's why she's not there? No, Miss Fiaco. I think we double booked our court reporter because it was supposed to be Miss Richardson. Miss Richardson was on that same trial. Miss Fiaco is it trial over? Yes, it concluded yes. this afternoon. Yeah, she said it's over. Miss Gaston. Okay. Do you, uh, Miss Fiacco, by any chance, do you recall who the court reporter uh, was? I don't know her name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, no worries, no worries. But I'm thinking it was Miss Richardson, and I know I booked her for these two weeks. <laughs> so no worries, no worries. Okay. Okay, hold on. I think we got Samantha Ingram coming on. Hold on one second. Okay, okay. Judge, can I ask for a point of clarity on position number two, which Ms. Bassett is, she's gonna do an order on for position two and three, is that correct? 
because he had two positions for Mr. White. I, I can do that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we that both case numbers reflected in order so it wouldn't be a problem if one case number had an order and he still didn't have one in the other one. Thank you for, for the reminder. All right, well, to the court reporter gets here. Gentlemen, you're looking in the screen. It's not a mirror. Not be looking and fix your hair, mash your zits, scratch it stuff, or do anything like that, or wave. It's not a time. It's not visitation. All right? Keep your head up. Pay attention. Don't put your head down. Shut the door behind you, because that way you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. Today, we're addressing bond. It's much like first appearance. We don't talk about guilt or innocence. We don't talk about facts of the case. We talk about what you're charged with, then I address a bond. Everyone in here has been in jail over 90 days, so you're statutorily entitled to a bond. There's nothing you can say today that's going to help you, so your lawyer is going to ask that you, we're not going to unmute you. So what you do, though, when I call your name is you got to wave, so we'll see oh, who yeah, you there are. Is. And also, if we ask you a question, it's going to be yes or no. Yes is a thumbs up, no is a thumbs down. This is what I call a you problem. Uh, let's see, ladies and gentlemen. One, we're going to address your bond conditions. That means it's your problem, not your mama's problem, not your sister's problem, not your baby mama's problem, nobody else's problem, but your problem. So you need to listen. Your public defender will mail you a copy of your bond conditions once this is finished today. You may make the bond and the letter pass you in the mail. So when you get out and get home, you need to call your lawyer and ask for a copy of your bond conditions so that you'll know what you are and are not supposed to do. Don't have it sent to your mama's house. Don't have it sent somewhere else. This is a you problem. If you mess up, your mama's not going to jail. You are. So make sure you pay attention, gentlemen. There may be some stay away, some ankle monitors, some uh, no further contact. Violating one of those will make you end up back in here. And unfortunately, sometimes you may have to wait another 100 days before you get back in front of me to have your bond addressed again. If you move, you need to let your lawyer know where you moved to so that she, he or she can put in a change of address. All right, gentlemen, everybody got it? Everybody give me a thumbs up. Outstanding, except a couple people just kind of looking at me. So I'm assuming that the people that didn't give a thumbs up either can't hear or don't know what a thumbs up is or a thumbs down. All right, how are we looking, Ms. Gaston? She's coming. Good evening, Your Honor. I did want to make one announcement for you real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, just I know you had two other people who you've removed for driving. I did just want to notify you. If you look at my camera, I am in my vehicle right now, but I am parked. You can see I'm not moving. I will I not be moving the entire time. I just happened to need to be somewhere a little bit after this. That was going to take me longer to get to than just being at the office. So. All right. What case you got there, Mr. Lang? You just got one? I have two. I have one gentleman, Mr. Sparrow, who has three cases, and then I have Mr. Tenney, who has one case. All right, we're trying to, after I uh, take care of these other couple, we're trying to jump on yours quickly, so you can get to Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Atlanta traffic. And Your Honor, I'm here on behalf of position three, Mr. Mulder for Mr. Cazzoli. Okay. All right, as soon as we get the court reporter on here, we'll take care of all this. Be able to get her um, mental health medication. Violence in 2018, battery disorder. All right, Ms. Bosky, we'll also make you a uh, co host if you'd like to have the backup, the recording for your backup. Thank you. All right, you ready, Ms. Bosky? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, we're going to start with position six mm. uh, ACDC. You ready? This is. 22 CP 212136 Quintal Jones 226 days without indictment charged with aggravated assault there is a $7500 good bond as of September the 9th 
Wake up, Bostic. Okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Jones. Uh, two FTAs, 15 and 19, five misdemeanors, battery family violence in 2018, battery disorder conduct, simple battery, one probation violation, open case, 22 CR 001295E, simple battery, obstruction, possession, drug related objects. That was for martyr and stay away from 132 Mitchell Street. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Gaddy. And yes, Your Honor, before the court is Ms. Jones. She is 28 years old, Judge. We reset this case from the March calendar because there was a pending ex parte. Um, we were confident she was going to come back competent, but Viewpoint needed her most recent uh, mental health records to reinstate services for her. I'm happy to announce to the court that Viewpoint has um, essentially restarted those services on her behalf. So she'll be getting mental health services, access to a counselor, and she'll also be able to get her um, mental health med medication once she is out. In addition, Your Honor, she's had a recent interview with PAD as well as Women on the Rise and Mary Freedom Hall, Mary Freedom Village Hall, all of which would provide temporary housing, Your Honor, and other support services um, aimed in particular at women, Your Honor. Um, she has been in custody for 200 days, Your Honor, without an indictment. I haven't seen an indictment on the horizon, Judge. Allegations that she threw a bottle at someone on the train, Judge. Um, I do believe at that time she was unmedicated, but I think now with medication back in place, with her having services that will be in place as she exits, as, as, as she exits the jail, Your Honor, I think she'll be in a much better position to be successful, Judge. So we're asking for bond to be reduced to something along the lines of three to 4,000, Judge, that'll make her eligible for the bail project, Your Honor. Um, obviously, a stay away from MARTA will be a part of the bond order. No further contact with the listed victim. Even though I don't believe Ms. Jones knows this person personally, doesn't have their phone number, email address, anything of that source, Your Honor. Um, and whichever other conditions to make sure that she's compliant. Um, I don't know if an angle monitor would be necessarily necessary in this case, Your Honor, um, because of had in particular, I think they've noted concerns about the fact that with them, you know, moving people around, they have a hard time managing whether or not a place will um, actually have the capacity to make sure they'll have consistent access to an angle monitor charger. Um, a replace the charge to charge your honor. And so I don't want her to be in pad for, in particular, right? And lose the capacity to actually charge her ankle monitor because pad is in limbo or moving her to another place. And within that time period, the ankle monitor goes dead, your honor. So that's the concern as it relates to pad and her having the ankle monitor judge. But that's our argument for Bonnet at this time, judge. All right, what says the state? Based on uh, Mrs. Jones's criminal history with the pending um, the pending case uh, dealing with, I think it was battery. Um, aggravated assault. Oh, oh, aggravated oh, assault. Pending. No, not, um, so I thought she had another pending case. Oh, the um, one that's pending, yes. Yes. So, um, and based on the previous convictions for simple assault and battery, where we think that the bond is reasonable and should not be lowered. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. So she's probably going to live in Fulton County, right, Ms. Gowdy? Because there was a Fulton, there was an Ellenwood address previously. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. All right. Stay away from Marta, ma'am. That's all Marta. Trains, automobiles, uh, bus stops. If you walk past the bus stop, you cannot sit down at the bench on the bus stop and tie your shoe. You have to walk past that and sit on the curb. So stay away from all Marta. Instead of an anchor monitor, we're going to put you on the Talatrix. It's that watch, Ms. Gowdy. I think the uh, mm -hmm. charge holds a lot longer. I think Ms. Hunter knows how to write that up. So you're under a 24 hour curfew, you said for court, lawyer, medical employment, and then any mental health treatment or any treatment that, or any kind of facility or program that Ms. Gowdy gets you into. Stay away from 435 West Peachtree Street. No further contact with Ryan Adams. $4,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, ma'am. I've already sent the list email to uh, Ms. Willis. Okay, thank you. Thank you, you South Annex. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Wayne Mulder. Wait, he was supposed to be in Cobb. Let's see. Joseph, let me take one of the cup. Joseph Taylor. All right, gotcha. Here you go. Uh, position 10, 21 CP 202174, 617 days without indictment. There's a $12,000 no. good bond as of February the 23rd. Possession of firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Free. Ah. Both a state offender in Florida, domestic battery 2011 2013, probation violation, FTAs 2013, 17, and 19, possession of cocaine 2017. Nothing further. All right.
Go ahead, Ms. Bassett. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Taylor is 32 years old. He is from the state of Florida, which is adjacent to Georgia. I think he that is close Florida enough man. to return to court. Um, he does have his own music label. He has five children. Um, he is close with his father. His father lives in Atlanta, I believe. That is a 404 number. I did inherit this case from Miss Gowdy. Um, I am very impressed with how organized her files are. Always happy to get cases from her. I would note that uh, he has been in custody, as you said, Your Honor, 617 days without an indictment. Um, that is unconscionable. I don't know how he could make any bond. I know that 12,000 is too high. That is unreasonable for him. I would note that Mr. Taylor is asserting his right to a speedy He's a music trial. Label. He is demanding a speedy trial. I fully intend on filing a constitutional speedy motion to dismiss. The state needs to fish or cut bait. And I would ask the court to consider a $5,000 good bond. All right, what says the state? The state believes the bond is, is at a reasonable um, amount at this time with uh, reasonable conditions. So Ms. Bassett, where is he gonna live? Because I have a Florida address. Your Honor, I believe that that Florida address is still a good address. All right. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No further contact with Marty Brown. Stay away from Woodruff Park and all parks in the city of Atlanta. Stay away from 51 Peachtree Street. Stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the yeah, name of your sharp. employer, proof of employment schedule the and the exact location you're going to be working. You have to supply that to the ankle monitor company and to Miss Bassett. 4000 on count one, 4000 on count two. Best of luck to you, sir. Judge Manning? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mulder is in Cobb. It should be booth three. Well, the other guy in booth three said, Wayne Mulder. Do a thumbs up, Mr. Mulder. Okay, Thank well, you. the other guy waved his hand. That's why I'm like, okay, Wayne yeah. Mulder. All right. Uh, he did. Gentlemen, uh, Mr. Taylor, you go ahead and lay the booth. Thank you. Let's see, this number three, 22CP211943, two, two, Wayne Mulder, 233 days without indictment, aggravated uh, armed robbery, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. There's a $34,000 good bond as of December the 13th. Free trial. Yeah, in regards to Mr. Mulder, two prior arrests, the other arrest is an open case out of Clayton County of terroristic threats felony from a February the 7th of 2022 arrest. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Kenner. Uh, was Mr. Kozlov, it's not you, Ms. Kenner Bruton. Is he going to live? Where is he going to live? Your Honor, he is going to live at 941 Margaret Place Northwest. That is in Fulton County, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318. And I verified that address with his grandmother today. Um, he is 18 years of age. He's been in custody for 233 days without an indictment. His preliminary hearing was held on December 16th of 2022. So we're at four going on five months and still no indictment. Um, he was arrested on August 31st of 2022, Your Honor. He is currently held with a $34,000 good bond. We're asking for that bond. Um, to be reduced, not to exceed $15,000. And if you are inclined, we're asking for a UJR to the Clayton County hold. If you're not, again, the bond not to exceed $15,000. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Turner. The state uh, is of the opinion that it should not be lowered at this time. Uh, we believe it's reasonable based on the history with the um, terroristic threat still pending. So we think it should be a remain where it is. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 3300 Lynnhurst Drive, Southwest. Going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical. Is he still going to Is he still going to plan on going to school? He was in school, um, Your Honor. I'm assuming he would be able to go back. When he was arrested, he was a senior at Stockbridge High School, so we're anticipating him being able to go back so he can complete his degree. Okay. And his diploma. All right, and uh, school, as long as he provides proof of employment, his schedule, and proof that he's going. But I had to stay out of Fulton County, so now he's not going to live back down in Henry County, right? No, he is living in Fulton County. Remember, uh -oh. I gave you the 940. No, no, I remember. I said previously I had to stay out of Fulton County. Okay. So now he's going to live in Fulton County. So I'll remove that. 10,000, 10,000, and 5,000. Best of luck to you, sir. Come on. Keep him on a Chick Fil A at least. Thank you, Your Honor, and that completes my business. May I be excused? <laughs> yes, ma'am. And I've already sent a list of Miss Willis. All right, Thank you, see. Travis Smith. Travis Smith. You gotta wave your hand if you're Travis Smith. 
Judge, I, I have a Travis Sims. Is that the same? Oh, Travis Sims. Sorry, yeah, Travis Sims. All right, Mr. Mulder, you can leave the booth. Leave, Mr. Mulder. Mr. Mulder. Bye. You can leave. Mr. Mulder. GTFO, right. oh, my friend. 14 days without indictment. <laughs> 22 CP 212482. Possession of cocaine, driving, fleeing, attempting to elude. BGCSA, possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute. Possession of schedule three, four, or five. Driving improper erratic lane change. Drugs not in original container. Possession of marijuana less than ounce. Driving on expired license plate or decal. Reckless driving. Fade to obey traffic signal or light. Tampering with evidence. Misdemeanor and obstruction. Misdemeanor. Right now, it said there is 23.1 grams of meth, 12 Xanax pills, 1.8 grams of coke. Let's see, 8.5 grams of weed. And I think that might, oh, and there's one more. I think it's 80 other pills. Ah. Seven prior arrests, uh, simple battery, family violence, and 20 of tampering with evidence in 2021, drug related objects, open case one, schedule four, another schedule four, and drug related objects from a one 21 22 arrest out of Norcross. Nothing further. All right, it's a $74,000 split bond right now. Thank you, Judge. Uh -huh. Mr. Sims is 43 years old. He's resided here in Georgia since 1998. He has three young children, ages 10, 8, and 3. He has regular contact with and supports them financially. Um, he did make it through the 10th grade and was most recently working at a temp agency called Labor Ready, doing construction work as well as cooking work. Um, he believes that he can go back and work for that agency if released on bond. Um, Miss Cole did leave a note for me that we do actively have a social worker working on helping him get into a program. However, he does have a hold out of Gwinnett. And so any program that we do get him into would have to hold that spot for him. Right now, after 214 days without indictment and a bond at $74,000, um, it is it's impossible for him to be able to make that. So we are asking for a significant reduction. Um, I'll skip past the UJR jails, but we are asking for count one to be lowered to 1,000, count two, 5,000, count three, 20,000, count four, 1,000, count nine, 3,000, count 11, 3,000 for a total bond of $33,000. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, stop playing with your hair. Sit up straight so I can see you. I don't want to look at the top of your head. Sit up, sit up, sit up. It's not a mirror. Sit up, booth six, booth three. Six out. There you go. Sit up, everybody. Go ahead, Ms. Uh, Turner. The state, um, based on the, the pending cases dealing with drug charges and um, the defendant's criminal, other criminal history, we ask that it not be lowered at this time. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Where is he going to live, Ms. Rosenhoover? So right now, Judge, we have a social worker working on it. We're not sure exactly where he's going to live. So we'd ask that he not be banned from Fulton County. Okay. Uh, you're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. You must provide an address before you're released from the jail. Stay away from the Holcomb Bridge, Eves Road area. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. No driving unless you have a valid license, insurance, and registration. 1,000 on count one, 5,000 on count two, 40,000 on count three, 1,000 on count four, 3,000 on count nine, and 3,000 on count 11. The others are UJR through the jail. Got that, Miss Hunter? Uh, no, I missed the last one. The last I know where there's free lodging. All right. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. All right. Let's see. Is Jalen Tinney. Jalen Tinney. All right, sir. Mr. Lane. Got position 17, 22, CP 215020, 111 days without indictment. There's a $14,000 good bond as of December 31st on theft by receiving stolen property, possession of a firearm or a knife during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, misdemeanor obstruction, reckless driving. Great trial. Five prior arrests took a PTI on entering the auto in 2020, first offender for theft by receiving stolen property in 2018, and uh, fleeing and eluding. Open case for a financial transaction card fraud, Thank you. transaction card theft, criminal attempt to commit a felony. Nothing further. Sorry, Mr. Lang. 
Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Tenney is 22 years old, born and raised here in Georgia, lived his entire life here, completed the 10th grade here. As a two month old, or sorry, two month at the time of his arrest, he's been in custody for four months. So a six month old daughter uh, is his only child. He lives at the address of record uh, with his mother. That we know about. The information, the, oh, and I apologize for employment. He's worked for Amazon for the last six months, working, help picking and packing orders at one of their warehouse locations. Based on the information presented, looking at the nature of the charges and the nature of his history and the fact that he's been in custody four months without indictment, I'm asking the court at bare minimum to cut the bond in half to seven thousand dollars. Good. I'd be asking the court to consider five so I can put it through the bail project. All right, Chris Turner. The state is asking that the bond not be lowered at this time. All right, no drugs unless prescribed. No, like no weapons. Stay away from two zero two zero. She's just straight no. Southwest. It's a hard no. No further con contact with <laughs> Hannah Olson. H A N N A H. I'm not saying she's wrong. S E N. She's consistent. Five thousand, four thousand. <laughs> State objects to bond reduction. Two hundred fifty <laughs> and five hundred. Five thousand, four thousand, two hundred fifty dollars and five hundred dollars. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. All right, we got the other one is Aaron Sparrow. Mr. Sparrow, me? wave your hand if you're in the booth. Not yet. All yeah, right, honey, he's not in the booth. He's going to come in the booth after the defendant that's in booth four. Okay. Let's see. Eric Harris. All right. 22 CP 214967, number 13, Bostic. 114 days without indictment. There's a $8,200 good bond as of December the 28th. Possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Driving expired or no license plate or decal. No insurance. Possession of marijuana less than an ounce. And driver in possession of an open container. Free trial. Extensive criminal history, a repeat offender, 36 prior arrests, at least seven felonies. The last one, though, appears to be an 01 firing by a convicted felon. History of theft by receiving stolen property and burglaries, five misdemeanors, one being a very old DUI, one FTA in 2017, three arrests for probation violation. Nothing further. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Rhodes. Yes, Judge. Um, Mr. Harris is 58 years old. Uh, he's been in jail uh, now for 114 days uh, without indictment on this $8,200 bond. Um, if I have that right, yes, $8,000, um, $200. He does have the address on file where he would be staying at. He'd be staying there with his mother. Uh, he has family in Georgia. Uh, he is from here in Georgia. Uh, he has an eight-year-old daughter as well. Uh, currently, he's on um, SSI, a fixed income. Um, and as it stands, uh, you know, no one's really able to make the bond that he has currently. Um, judge, uh, from as far as I'm aware, his last um, kind of engagement with the, the this guy's biggest problem is that his attorney has a man bond. The court system was quite some time ago. Um, <laughs> I'll say at least 10 years ago. And, you know, these charges, you know, although they are serious, of course, there is a felony involved. There's nothing violent. Uh, there's no victim involved. Um, I would ask for We're uh, going soft a city, UGR on these charges concerning the situation, though I am aware that that is um, essentially illegal, especially for the, the fire, the weapons charge. Um, that in mind, Judge, I would ask for a $1,000 bond on the firearm charge and um, $500 on each of the misdemeanors. All right. uh, Ms. Turner? Uh, due to the uh, defendant's criminal history, including seven felonies, we do not believe that he's a, a good candidate for a lower bond. So we ask for it to remain where it is. All right. No drugs, less prescribed, no alcohol. No I am not jealous of the man bun, but I am jealous of Five South. That is a fantastic head of hair. No weapons, no driving. I guess you have valid uh, driver's license, insurance, and <laughs> registration. 4000 count one, $100 count two, $500 count three, $100 count four, and one hundred dollars count five four thousand one hundred five hundred one hundred and one hundred best of luck to you sir thank you judge uh that's a good case may i be excused yes sir edward baysmore 
I think the wrong one. All right, let's see. Uh, position two, two two CP two one one eight one one two hundred thirty eight days without indictment. So the only thing we have left in this one is the hijacking in the second degree. Am I right, Miss Beck? That's correct, Your Honor. Um, I think there's no bond on that one count because the others were either uh, null prost or indicted. That's correct. Yes. I love it when you whittle it down just to the hijacking and just it's just it's so easy from there. Oh. In regards to Mr. Excuse me, Baysmore, 14 prior arrests, one misdemeanor, one arrest for probation violation, 07 robbery and false imprisonment. Um, open case 23 SC 187 148, schedule two and a firearm by nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Beck. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Basemore is 37 years old. He has one child who is 21 years old. He went through Decatur Technical School and he was a graduate from there. Um, prior to his arrest, but now that it's been 238 days, I'm not sure if he could get that job back. However, prior to his arrest, he was self-employed as a construction um, and doing handyman work. He's originally from New Jersey, but has lived in Georgia since 1991. The address on file on Roxbury Drive is still a good address for him, and he lives there with his mother. Um, so as you mentioned, the other cases were either indicted or null prost. And I do, the hijacking was not. That's the only one that's left, as you mentioned. I, If I were to take a wild guess, it's because of what came out during the preliminary hearing, where there was a lot up in the air, very unreliable witness. Um, the reporting party was very unreliable. She had lied. So I just would like you to take all of that into consideration why they did choose only certain, why they left this one is what I'm trying to say. Um, based on that, we are asking for a $4,000 bond for this one charge, Your Honor. Okay, uh, Ms. Turner, and right now there is, it's 10,000 on this count. Go ahead, Ms. Turner. Due to the nature of the offense and um, the defendant's criminal history, we are asking that this bond not be lowered at this time. Go, Erica. That's uh, a hard no. May I ask if the state has had contact with the victim, alleged victim? I'm loving Erica. Carter. Not that um, I'm aware no. of. No. Your Honor, I also would like to note that in the entire time that I've been on this case, there has been no victim contact. That would actually help. Do you have a bond on the indicted case? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And it is, if I remember correctly, oh, I did write it down. I'm so sorry. Um, he has $6,000 for those two charges combined mm -hmm. that were indicted. So that's why we are asking for this to be so low so that he is able to bond out now that those two charges have been indicted. All right. He, and, sir, you're going to live in, that's Clayton County. Thumbs up or thumbs down. All right, good. Stay out of Fulton County unless you're for court or to see your lawyer. Don't get gas. Don't get a flat tire. Don't stop for a snack on your way to court or to see your lawyer. You got to do all that in Clayton County before you come here. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from 2471 Old National Highway, which should be fine because that's in Fulton County, and you can't come here. No further contact with Susan Carter. $7,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can lay the boot. That concludes my matters for this evening. May I be excused, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we don't have Mr. Sparrow yet, do we? No. All right. What about uh, Trenton Thompson? All right. Position 24, Bostic 22, CP 212643, 208 days without indictment. There's a $10,000 good bond as of December the 21st. On robbery by sudden snatching. Preach. Wow. In regards to Mr. Thompson, seven prior arrests, violent arrest history, uh, misdemeanor, simple battery, two counts from February 2022, open case Clayton, aggravated battery. Nope, sorry. Took first offender. Battery 522-21, one year confinement, four years probation. Another op and Covington for aggravated battery, 315-21. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Rosenhofer. I think he still lives in Covington, sir. 
He will be living in Albany, Georgia with his aunt. Um, we don't have that specific address right now, but he's working on getting that. Um, so yes, he'll be an Albany judge. Okay, go ahead. He is 26 years old, a lifelong Georgia resident. His entire family lives here. Um, as I stated, he will be living in Albany with his aunt. He earned his high school diploma and did attend the University of Georgia for a little while. Um, he most recently was doing DoorDash. Um, and Your Honor, just briefly into the facts, I believe that the allegation is that a cell phone was taken um, and apparently when police responded, which was almost immediately, no cell phone was recovered. Those are the notes from Ms. Cole. At this time, given the fact that he has been in custody over 200, day, over 200 days without indictment and can't afford this. Your Honor, let my client out. He was smart enough to ditch the cell phone that he just stole. Bond. We're asking for a reduction to $5,000 so that we can utilize the services of the bail project. Thank you. Ms. Turner, due to the defendant's uh, violent history, uh, criminal history, we're asking that this bond not be lowered at this time. Get them, Erica. No guns unless prescribed. No alcohol, no weapons. You're going to have an income monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, a schedule in the exact location you're going to be working. Stay out of Fulton County, sir. The only reason you come to Fulton County is court or to see your lawyer. Fill up with gas before you get to Fulton County. Throw snacks in the car, stuff to drink, everything. You do not stop in Fulton County for absolutely anything. Stay away from 5700 Roswell Road in Sandy Springs. No further contact with Antonio Lopez. $8,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Eugene McWhite. All right, it's position 11. Miss Fiaco. This is 21 CP 205444. 479 days without indictment. There's a $25,000 good bond as of December the 1st. Aggravated assault, family violence, robbery by force, simple battery, possession of firearm or knife during the commission of a felony. Free trial. Judge, nine <clears throat> prior arrest, violent arrest history. One arrest for probation violation, 2010, drugs. Open case 23 CP 217295 aggravated battery and Douglas on probation from 61818 aggravated battery, aggravated assault firearm during aggravated battery two counts. Uh, sentence in 2018, five years confinement, five years probation. And did I say terrorist threats too? No, you Nothing just did. further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Bianco. Like I said, I've already sent all the names of anybody over 200 days to. The DA. Thank you, Your Honor. And I, I do appreciate that because Mr. McWhite has been in custody now for 479 days without indictment. Um, this afternoon, I filed um, a demand asserting Mr. McWhite's uh, right to a constitutional uh, speedy trial, and that should be hitting Odyssey soon. I cc Deputy Hutchinson on that email. Um, and I've also been in contact with Deputy Hutchinson about how the complaining witness in this case has signed a waiver of prosecution, um, but that is still not getting us anywhere. Um, it's not moving the case forward, making a charging decision, or having the state respond in any meaningful way. Um, like I said, 473 days, uh, Mr. McWhite, he is 31 years old. He lives in the metro Atlanta area. Um, he's lived here since he was in middle school. Um, the instant location is where he was living, so he understands that he can't go back there. Um, and so we are asking the court to consider a significant reduction. When he was arrested, he was in the process of applying for SSI, um, so he does not have an income. Um, your Honor, we're asking for the bond to be cut in half in this case. Is he going to be living in Fulton County? Well, he needs to find a new place to live um, be because the it's the location right. was where it's it was. Location. Are you going to look at Fulton County, sir? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Get your fingers out of your nose. Thumbs down, not looking. Okay, okay not looking at Fulton. Okay. All right, what says Ms. Turner? The state thinks the bond is reasonable at this time due to the defendant's um, criminal history. All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You're going to have an income monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, 
medical or employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, place of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from 765 McDaniel Street. Stay out of Fulton County unless you're for court or to see your lawyer. You have to supply a sufficient address where you'll be uh, residing to the staff and to the ankle monitor company when you get released. Yeah, 4,000, 4,000, 1,000, and 5,000. 4,000, 4,000, 1,000, 5,000. Best of luck to you, sir. You lay the booth. Natron Williams. All right. Number one, uh, 23, CP, 215179, 170 day, 107 days without indictment, no bond as of January the 5th, armed robbery, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm or a knife during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. Pre Six prior arrests. Conviction is a 2018 theft by shoplifting one arrest for probation violation. Open case 22 CP 211572. Armed robbery, firearm during and aggravated assault. Nothing further. All right. Ms. Kennebrew, is this yours? No, it isn't, Judge. That's why I was waiting. It, oh. Originally, this is attorney Ricardo Mosby. Yes, and sir. I did enter my appearance. I got the link from Ms. Kenner. They still had her on the record. So I will be taking care of it today. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, Mr. Williams is 22 years old, Your Honor. He is born and raised here in Atlanta. Uh, lives He has lived here all his life, obviously. He went to Riverdale High School, but he did not complete uh, his requirements for his diploma. I am happy to report, though, that he has signed up for the GED program while he's been incarcerated. And his plan is to continue and finish that up. Just prior to this judge, uh, he right when he was arrested, he had an interview at Publix in Dunwoody. I'm not sure if he'll be able to uh, get that opportunity back, but he was actively looking for a job. Uh, and so we're asking and requesting judge a reasonable bond for him. He hasn't been working for a while. So we're asking for a global good bond of $15,000 if the court can make that happen. <clears throat> he lives in Clayton County? He, no, he lives in, well, he, he will be living with his father, uh, Judge, and that's on Madison Drive. That's in Atlanta, 30346. So that will be in Fulton. All right. Ms. Turner, there's no bond right now. The uh, Due to the um, open case involving armed robbery and um, um, his criminal history as a whole, we're asking for a $100,000 bond on each as a minimum. Nothing further, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, no drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 399 Edgewood Avenue. No further contact with Kevin Lemon, L E M O N. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. You have to supply that to the ankle monitoring company and to your lawyer, sir. So you got 50,000 count one, 30,000 count two and 20,000 count three. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Judge, and I have nothing further. May I be excused? Yes, sir. What about you, Aaron Sparrow? There we go. Mr. Lang. All right, it's three cases on here, Bostic. We got 2-2, two, two, CP, 215024. 112 days without indictment. Theft, uh, burglary in the first degree, theft by taking felony, criminal damage to property, second degree, no bond. Uh, 22 CP 21505, excuse me, 025, 112 days without indictment, no bond as of December 30th, possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Position 16 is 22 CP 215026, 112 days without indictment. There is no bond as of December 31st on VGCSA, possession of controlled substance, schedule one or two with intent to distribute. Possession of MDMA with intent to distribute, possession of a knife or a firearm during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies, possession of drug related objects, possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. That's 15 grams of shrooms, 5 grams of MDMA, and 209 grams of marijuana. Free from. <laughs> Bostic. I'm here. Okay, that was a felony. That's his felony. I don't see uh, 10 arrests, two arrests for probation violation. FTA, his felony is a felony for eluding in 2018. Open case, another open case, but it's a misdemeanor. 23000037G, driving, fleeing and eluding, failing to obey, reckless driving. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Mr. Lang. 
Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sparrow is 24 years old, born and raised here in Georgia, lives in Atlanta, Georgia, should be the address on file. He has six minor children, all of whom live with him, all of whom he is the fine, uh, primary financial and physical caregiver for. He made it to the 12th grade. Oh, he did Lord. not uh, graduate, but he was in GED <clears throat> classes. He's not been able to finish his GED yet. He is hoping that if he's able to get out, he can return to the GED program and finish it. He's certified through HVAC, through the Job Corps. He got that certification about four years ago. He's been working in the construction industry uh, for a couple of years. He helps kind of co-own and co-operate a construction company He's with a lot one of people of, provide one for of the grandparents of his children. <laughs> Looking at the information presented, understanding the number of cases here, uh, Mr. Sparrow has been in custody since New Year's Eve without a bond in this case. I'm asking the court on position 14, case in the ending in 024, to set a $7,500 good bond, $2,500 on each charge. On 15, case ending in 025, I'm asking the court for a $5,000 good bond. And on position 16, case ending in 026, I'm asking the court for a total bond in that case, not to exceed $7,500 good. This would create a total bond of $25,000 good spread across all three cases. All right, Ms. Turner, due to these uh, pending cases on the calendar today and the defendant's criminal history, we are asking for a minimum of 50,000 for each uh, pending charge. Is he gonna live at the house on Old National Highway? No, Your Honor, it's an address on Continental Colony Parkway. It was read off at first appearance. Okay. I just don't know if it was updated in the system or not. Yeah. Is it Fulton County, sir? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, gotcha. All right, position 14, no drugs, less prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 3871 Red Wine Road Southwest. No further contact with Derek Thomas. No further contact with Cage Juan, K-E-J-U-A-N Wiggins, W-I-G-G-I-N-S. Have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're going to be working. 10,000, 10,000, and 5,000. Weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're going to be working. $10,000 good bond. Position 16. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, and the exact location you're going to be working. So we got uh, $10,000, $10,000, $15,000, $10, possession of drug laid objects, UJR through the jail, and $20,000 on the weed. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. All right. Omer yep. Foster. Thank Your you. Honor, that concludes my business with you. Yes, sir. Good luck in traffic. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good evening. You too. Omer Foster. All right, gentlemen, if you get up and leave, don't go down there like talking to folks. Go get your meds, come back, because if you leave, I'm skipping over you. Stay in the booth. All right. All right, position 18, 113 days without indictment. There's a $38,500 good bond as of December the 31st. 22 CP 215037, Omer Foster. Possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. Possession of a controlled substance in schedule 345 with intent to distribute. Possession of controlled substance in one, two, one or two with intent to distribute. Possession of controlled substance in schedule one or two with intent to distribute. Possession of firearm or knife during the commission of or attempt to commit certain felonies. We got 109 grams of weed, uh, some promethazine hydrochloride, 7.8 grams of crack, 19 Xanax pills, and a 12 gauge shotgun. Free trial. <laughs> seven, <clears throat> seven prior arrests. No real felony. Took a first offender on a burglary in 2012. Three misdemeanors. Nothing further. Go ahead, Ms. Rosenhoover. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Foster is 28 years old. He is a lifelong Georgia resident. Um, most of his family is here in the metro Atlanta area where he's specifically been for the past 10 years. He has two young children and he does live at the address on file. Um, I submitted a change of address early March. 
He lives there with his wife and his children. Um, his wife did have to quit her job since Mr. Foster has been in custody to care for their children, and they really are struggling to make ends meet right now. Um, he's also a high school graduate, graduated in 2013, and for work, he was working on building industrial scaffolding. He's been doing that for four years now. He was also part of the Carpenters Union and has been since 2018 and got a number of certifications through that, um, from wood framing to safety and fire hazard certifications, asbestos certifications, forklift, everything. And he is anxious to get out and be able to provide for his family. Additionally, Judge, he's been a part of the New Beginnings program at the jail, and they've recommended other substance abuse and recovery programs out on the outside that he intends to get involved with. Um, he is looking forward to that. And also, Judge, I just want to point out the bond order that I have says that it is currently at a straight bond, which um, is definitely has definitely imposed an obstacle to him. Um, we are asking for a reduction and for it to be a good bond. Um, for count one, we're asking for 3,000, count two, 3,000, count three, 6,000, count four, 6,000, and count five, 3,000 for a total of a $21,000 good bond. Thank you. All right, Mr. Turner. Uh, we are in the opinion that the bond is reasonable this time, and we ask for no reduction. <laughs> 4,000 count one, 4,000 count two. I think I'm in love. 6,000 count three, 8,000 count four, 4,000 count two. Got that, Miss Hunter? Yeah, I got it. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Wait, did a change of address to Riverdale. That's Clayton County, sir? All right, stay out of Fulton County unless you're here for court or to see your lawyer. Don't get gas, don't get a snack, don't stop for anything. Straight to court, park, go inside, or see your lawyer, and then get out of Fulton County. You can have ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew, except for court, lawyer, medical, and employment. As long as you supply the name of your employment, employer, proof of employment, schedule the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from 840 McDonough Boulevard, which is in Fulton County, so you should be fine. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. Ryan Middlebrooks, Mr. Middlebrooks. All right, no bond as of December the 31st. He's got two cases. Let's see, 22 CP 215065, 113 days. Theft by receiving stolen property, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, reckless driving. 22 CP 213788. There's a $16,000 good bond on theft by taking felony. Possession of marijuana, less than an ounce, willful obstruction. On here, it says, Ms. Rose Newber, that he's posted that bond. Did they come off of that? I, From what I understand, Judge, that case is not holding him in. That bond is still good, and he's just being held on the first case that you read. Okay. All right. Well, can we just leave it alone in case it's not in there? I would prefer that we left it alone. Okay. All right. Well, if it's, if it's not and something pops up, you'll just get back on the calendar. Absolutely. Mastic. Preach. Right. <laughs> Y'all broke up, boss. It comes some minutes on your phone and you're coughing. My bad. <laughs> um, in regards to Mr. Uh, Middlebrooks, 22 prior as extensive criminal history, three FTAs, at least four felonies, um, Aggravated assault, theft by receiving firearm during entering autos, open case 21 SC 179232. Yeah. Um, by that's in judicial hold, 22 CP 213788, theft by taking and misdemeanor possession. Nothing further. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Rosenhoover. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Middlebrooks is 38 years old. He is a lifelong Georgia resident. I did update his address with the clerk's office, and he'll be living at 422 Baker Circle Northwest. That's here in Atlanta, Georgia. He has two children, a 20-year-old and a five-year-old daughter. Um, he'd be residing with his sister. He made it to the eighth grade and later earned his GED in 2006, and most recently was working for Todd's Pate's Tree Service. Um, he's been doing that for about three months, and he's told me that he can go right back and continue to work with him, that he's confirmed that. Um, he also had some very severe medical issues when he was booked in. Um, and judge, at this time, he is legally entitled to a bond. We're at 113 days and he's been held on a no bond status. He has a hold. Um, We're asking for a bond that does not exceed $10,000 total. Thank you. All right. What says the state? Uh, for counts one through three, we're asking for 50000 each. And for count four, we're asking for a $1,000 bond. All right, well, about, okay. All right. So 
No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 1300 North Avenue. Gonna have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, or employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule, the exact location you're gonna be working. But as a high speed chase, you struck a tree, you flipped your car. So no driving unless this bond is modified, sir. 10, 15, 15, 8, 5. Ten thousand, fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand, and five thousand. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, Keith Thomas. All right, it's position 21, 22 CP 210792. 276 days without indictment. There's a $5,000 split bond as of November the 2nd for terroristic threats and act, criminal trespass, obstruction of a law enforcement officer, criminal attempt to commit a misdemeanor and willful obstruction, felony. Free trial. <laughs> Yo, mute, Bostic. Extensive criminal history, repeat offender, 46 prior arrests, at least 12 misdemeanors, at least seven felonies, four FTAs, history of aggravated assaults, robberies, forgery, forgery, firearm, during schedule four or five, probation violation. Nothing further. Go ahead, Ms. Rosenhoover. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Thomas is 59 years old. He has resided here in Georgia since 1990. Um, we do have a new address for him. His brother, Andre Thomas, actually came down to Georgia to bond him out. Um, he'll be residing in Delaware, and Ms. Cole will file a change of address if he is to be released on bond. Um, he did have a stable address here in Georgia, but since he's been in custody for 276 days, he has lost his place here. Um, Let's see. Yeah. He has one oh, adult yeah. daughter and three grandchildren. He earned his associate's degree in culinary arts and hotel management. Previously, he was working um, at a New York prime as a chef, but he would need to new, need to find new employment since he has been in custody now um, for so long. And he would be able to do that in Delaware. Um, we'd also request that this be added to the list to be indicted quickly. This has been an extensive amount of time he's been in custody. And Judge, just so you know, I'm looking at the bond order, but what shows in Odyssey right now is just 2,500 for count one and 1,000 for count five. Nothing else is holding him in. So he's being held on a $3,500 bond right now. Um, and we're asking that it does not exceed 2,500. So frankly, Judge, I'm not sure how that happened or what's going on with Odyssey, but we'd ask that the total bond not exceed 2,500 since that's all that his brother has um, to bond him out. Thank you. So the, what I'm looking at is of November is 2000 count one. And obviously he's going to be in Delaware. So the other two can't go through pretrial in 1000 and 1000. That's what I'm seeing too. I'm just looking at Odyssey on the jail side. It's showing as a $3,500 bond. I'm not okay. sure. Ms. Turner. The state is asking that the bond not be lowered at this time due to the defendant's criminal history. We believe it's reasonable. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from 50 oh, Upper Alabama Street. No further contact with Curtis oh, Motley, M-O-T-L-E-Y. You're going to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24-hour curfew. Court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, truth, proof of employment, schedule the exact location you're going to be working. Stay out of Fulton County, sir. The only reason you come to Fulton County is court or to see your lawyer. You better keep that ankle monitor charged. So we got 2000 250, 250, 250, and 2,000. 2,000, 250, 250, 250, and 2,000. Best of luck to you, sir. All right, let's see. Travis Williams. Travis Williams. Nobody wants to wave their hand. Nobody's Travis Williams. Okay, now we got to wave my hand. Position seven, 211 days without indictment, 22 CP 212554. Uh, aggravated assault, $50,000 bond as of December 20th. Preach, raw. Violent arrest history, 23 prior arrests in Georgia, at least six misdemeanors, probably seven felonies, a couple of FPAs, felonies, uh, purchase, manufacturing, sale of drugs, drugs. 2017 ag, 02 ag, drugs again. Drugs, drugs, drugs. 2018 ag, simple battery, battery, family violence, simple battery, family violence, CWAC charge, 
Some more drugs. The victims was Trinity Hall and Bob South, booth four. Come in and sit down. Nothing further. Ms. Sampson. Somebody, it should be somebody else, Judge, because she's no longer with the PD's office. Yeah, that's true. Who's covering this for uh anybody? Anybody? I can go ahead and help you. Ms. Turner's gonna say Bond's uh, good as it is. So I got her call. Anybody <laughs> wants to be a public defender? She sure is, and God bless Gowdy. her for it. Come on, Ms. Gowdy. <laughs> Everybody has left the building. <laughs> is anybody listening? <laughs> Judge, I can look to see whose case that's supposed to be. I'll just need a second. But if I can get notes, I'm happy to handle any hearing. I just have nothing in front of me. All right. Oh, and who we got one Mr. Tessier who's gone also. And then we got yours. How about we go to <laughs> Miss Fiaco's case? Anthony, we'll be back to you, sir. Anthony Reese. All right. How about this, Miss Fiaco? This is 21 CP 200590, Anthony Reese, 679 days without indictment. As of December the 1st, there is a $50,000 good bond as of on armed robbery. Free. Oh. Head up, four South Booth Three. Head up. Get up. There you go. Go ahead, boss. Extensive arrest history, under 45 prior arrests. One misdemeanor, at least seven felonies, going back to 07, cocaine with intent, robbery, cocaine, theft by receiving stolen property, at least three FTAs, five arrests for probation violations, prior robbery, nothing further. Go ahead, Ms. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Like you said, he's been in for 679 days without indictment. So that's June 11th, 2021. Eric is the honey badger. She don't give a shit. <laughs> without indictment. I would inquire of the state if they've had 679 days. No change of the bond. <laughs> I have not been able to get through the number on citation. It's not the number for the complaining witness. So if they have updated contact information, I would love to speak with her. Um, Today, like I like file your motion, like I did for Mr. You White, might win that, but we're not doing um, it here today. I have filed a demand for a constitutional speed trial on behalf of Mr. Reese, and they should be hitting <laughs> Odyssey either this evening or tomorrow morning. Um, but Mr. Reese has been in custody for far too long without indictment and without any movement on this case. Um, I can go into Ayala factors, Your Honors. 34. Lifelong resident of Georgia, high school graduate. I got your IRL um, factors right here. Worked as a mover and <laughs> while in custody, lost um, his younger sister, um, which has been very hard on him. Um, but, Your Honor, Fulton County Jail is not a safe place to be. And no one should be um, subjected to the conditions of 901 Rice Street for two years without a conviction let alone oh here we go i, th I think we've got uh, oblique reference to the uh to the bed bug incident which was which was horrible and a bunch of you guys sent to me if you don't know what it is look it up um but but yeah jails are not are not safe places to be they, they frankly never were it doesn't mean it's okay but the, he, we can't just let everybody out as a result oh an indictment um it's unconscionable and so, Your Honor, I'm asking that the bond be significantly reduced. I'm asking for a $5,000 bond on behalf of Mr. Reese. Go ahead, Ms. Turner. The state um, does not have any contact information for the victim. Um, and I, the bond is reasonable where it is right now based on the defendant's criminal history. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You can have an ankle monitor paid for by the county. First, she admits that they don't have contact with the victim, therefore they can't make their case. And then she tells him to pound sand. <laughs> it's completely honest, though. It's completely honest and transparent. He ain't going to have to keep it on for a year, Miss Bianco, if he gets out. 
with a 24-hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the name of your employer, place of employment, schedule, the exact location you'll be working. Stay away from 855 Peachtree Street. No further contact with Sincere Jackson or LaVon, L-A-V-O-N, Jones. $15,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. And Mr. ADA Turner, I'm sorry. Um, you don't have any contact information for the complaining witness? Has the state had contact with her? We have not had contact. Um, I just see that there's no contact information for the victim, so. Um. Okay. I highlighted this one in red. There's 221 cases on here for Mr. J Mr. Taylor and this one when I sent it to, uh, to Ms. Willis. Okay, thank you. Pointing out those number of days. Um, is there, been a, there has been a prelim though, right? Yep, wait. Yes. Last March. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, that concludes my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. All right, let's see. So we got... What did you find out, Ms. Rosenover? I have Ms. Woods emailing me right now. Um, she said Mr. Williams was given to Rachel and yeah, got an again. email about it today. So she may not. I believe that. I don't even know which Rachel that could be. But Ms. Woods is driving and we're trying to figure it out. Um, we may have to reset those if the files are spread okay. around. And just apologies from the public defender's office for not being more on top of it. We should have noticed those names and done something. It's all right. They had a couple of people leave recently. Um, how quick can we get it back on, Ms. Uh, Robinson? Um, I can put it back on for Tuesday. How about that, Ms. Rosenover? I think that'll work. I'll let Ms. Woods know. Okay, so you want me to put Travis Williams back on for Tuesday, correct? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. What about who's representing Anthony Jones? Do we know who's representing that one, too? Same announcement, Judge. If we could just reset them till Tuesday, I think okay. we'll have it figured out by then. So that's uh, position 12, Anthony Lamar Jones. 22CP214938, yours is being reset till Tuesday. Travis Williams, 22CP212554, yours is being reset till Tuesday. So we'll see y'all Tuesday. All right, uh, let's see. So we got now Nicholas Meadows. All right, 22CP215064, 112 days without indictment. There was a $51,000 good bond as of December 31st for a possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Certain acts on bus or train station, a rail station prohibited. Free trial. Meadows, 14 prior arrests, uh, seven felonies from 09. Obstruction, burglary, first offender, and interference with government property. Right in a penal institution, interference with government property, interference with government property again, and theft by receiving stolen property, obstruction, aggravated assault, 2017, parole violation one, probation violation two. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Rosenover. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Meadows is 33 years old. He is a lifelong Georgia resident, and his entire family does reside here in Georgia. If released, he would live with his aunt and cousin at the address on file for him here in Atlanta. Um, he is forklift certified and heavy equipment certified, and most recently was working at Higher Quest um, doing construction and handyman work. He'd been doing that since March of 2022. Um, he also earned his GED in 2009. Um, given the fact that he has now been in custody for 113 days with no indictment, this would be an easy case to indict. Um, I believe the allegation is that an officer saw him drinking alcohol um, at a MARTA station, and then he was found with a gun, allegedly. Um, we'd ask that this be added to the list as well. Um, but Judge, at this time, we would ask for you to cut the bond in half and to set it at no higher than 25000 Thank you. All right. What says the state? The state does not believe this bond needs to be lowered at this time. It is reasonable. No drugs are less prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. Stay away from all mortar property, sir. Planes, trains, automobiles, bus stations, bus stops. You cannot sit down at a bus stop and tie your shoe. Absolutely no mortar. So if you ride Clayton County trains or something like that, you get stuck. You can't ride it into Fulton County because that'd be a violation of your bond condition. Stay away from 1400. 
Lee Street. You got to have an ankle monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical, employment. As long as you supply the proof of employment schedule, the exact location you're going to be working. So 20,000 count one, 500 count two. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. All right, uh, Ali Alatif. All right, uh, position 22, 394 days without indictment. There's a $40,000 good bond as of January the 19th for aggravated assault, 22CP212282. Ali Alatif, A-L-A-T-I-F. Free! Oh. 11 prior arrest, three felonies. <laughs> One misdemeanor, felonies, criminal damage to property, burglary in 04, 06, firearm during an aggravated assault. Open case, 23, SC, 186, armed robbery, aggravated assault, firearm during firearm by, assigned to Judge Edwards. Nothing further. All right, go ahead, Ms. Rosenover. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Olatif is 36 years old. He is a lifelong Georgia resident. Um, his entire family resides here. He does have an eight-month-old baby boy who was born since he has been in custody, um, and he has never gotten to meet him. I am also told that this child was born um, with a serious heart defect that will need that has already had three surgeries and will likely need more. Financially, his family is in a very tight position. Um, we were able to confirm the address that's on file for him. That's on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. He resides there with his child and his child's mother. Um, he is employed as a foreman at U-Haul. He started working there back in November of 2020. They're currently holding the position for him, but they can't hold it forever. Um, and he has been in custody now for almost 400 days though I will, just to be candid with the court, on this particular case, it's just 220 days without indictment, um, which is still very significant. Um, he graduated from Booker T. Washington High School and attended two years of college at the University of Miami, um, Ohio, and Greenville Tech, and he was pursuing a degree in biblical science. Um, Judge, we are asking for this case, which is currently set at 40000 to be reduced to 10000 Thank you. What says the state? Come on, shock me. Say something besides it's reasonable. <laughs> uh, the, this is a criminal history and the pending armed robbery case. Uh, we asked that the bond not be lowered at this time. Yeah. You okay, tell her. Come and give us some more numbers. This, <laughs> I'm not a fan of just, you know, like putting it all on Alex Manning. <laughs> I like to see me on the news. Don't you, Miss Rose? Anyway. No drugs unless prescribed, no alcohol, no weapons. You have an income monitor paid for by the county with a 24 hour curfew, court, lawyer, medical. Attorney, business, and employer. As long as you supply the name of your employer, proof of employment, schedule the exact location you're going to be working. Stay away from 1107 Ralph David Abernathy Road. No further contact with your co-defendants. Dylan Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Cadmar Clark, C-A-D-H-M-A-R. Last name C-L-A-R-K. And Jermaine Carter. No further contact with Juanita Johnson. And no further contact with Flanagan, last name Dom, D-O-M. $25,000 good bond. Best of luck to you, sir. You can leave the booth. All right. All right. Judge? Anything else besides we got the lifesaver in Miss Bosky. Thank you, Miss Bosky. Lifesaver. <laughs> Think I can start stop the stream now, right? Well, there you have it. There you have it. I, I didn't know what was going on, and it turned out to be fun. We have a, we have a different prosecutor who, who I liked a lot. She, yeah, the, there were a couple questions there. Uh, skeptical chemist asked me, you know, how, how can they hold them that long? Everyone asks that question. I don't know. I, I don't want to sit here and, and talk about things that I don't do. So it's criminal law. Yes, there, there's a notion of speedy trial, but you have to assert a speedy trial. You can also waive a speedy trial. The, the, I, I'm not, there will be no learning here. There will be no learning. All I can tell you is it's contextual. Every one of those cases is different. You don't know what was going on in terms of the investigation. You don't know about the multiple charges. You don't know about holds in other places. You, you don't know about all those things. So I think a lot of this got automatically moved back by covid and they were they they were way behind i think they're catching up but i don't know um might might somebody make a good constitutional argument at some point and get all these people dumped onto the street uh sure that's possible but uh, no one's done it yet 
it's occurred to a lot of people, but no one's filed the magic motion that that, that got it there. So the, they're dealing with it the way they're dealing with it. You know, so so that's that. But but that that was a lot of fun as always. <laughs> I just looked at that and I thought I was going to review it to uh, to look at it and I, and then I'm like whatever it's Judge Manning it'll be fun. So instead I just made coffee and, st- and started streaming, and I'm glad I did. Thank you all for coming out. I will see you soon.